Century 21 Real Estate. Move fearlessly. Welcome back to another market report. My name's Travon. Typically, I just do bi-weekly stats or month-over-month -month stats so you can get the macro data as far as a full year through the real estate market. But I am gonna to touch over stats within the last seven days within the same counties to give you a full picture. And then I'm gonna to touch over the assumable loan aspect of a deal. And I'm gonna do it briefly because it's really something that you really wanna speak with when you're communicating with your lender. But if you are looking to sell and you're trying to avoid a high interest rate, this could be an avenue. Or if you're looking to sell and you're not getting a lot of business, this could be an avenue. It will have to be an FHA loan or a VA loan. It has to be a government-backed loan. Maybe there's some other um, ways to, for this to happen, but you're really gonna need to speak with a lender. Then I'm gonna touch over a little bit about macro information on the market, where we kind of feel that it's headed. Of course, we don't know everything. We don't have a crystal ball, but we do have experience in ebbs and flows of how the market has worked, at least in Texas for the last uh, 30 years. All right, so let's get into the market report. Today, we're gonna to start with DFW stats within the last seven days, just to give you the full picture and the flow of how things are going before we get into the other things. So DFW within the last seven days, they had 1,227 properties sold. They had 1,841 new listings, and then they had 1,419 pending. So pretty nice steady market, and you'll see how uh, that could be effective as we keep going. All right, so the assumable loan aspect. Now I am gonna be reading through this. So Let's just say an assumable loan is when you take over someone else's loan um, to move into the home. Now, yes, you can have, sometimes you can get another loan as well, um, but you would have to qualify. And this could even work, let's say you're not a VA, but, but, but the home that you're buying, the owner was a VA. You can take over that loan, but you will have to qualify for the VA guidelines, at least uh, financially. Like I said, if you want any more information on this, uh, let's get in touch and I'll get you uh, in contact with a lender that I work with and help you put these numbers together to make it make sense. You're selling your home for $500,000 and the buyer is going to put down 10% for this example. Um, okay, so the seller, they currently have an FHA loan and they're working with a 3.5 interest rate. Their leftover loan is $250,000 for this example. So your second mortgage would be in the amount of $200,000 at 8%. Yeah, with a loan balance of $250,000. So your principal and interest um, approximately is around $1,200. Now, what you would do is you'd get a second mortgage in the amount of $200,000. Basically, the leftover money to, uh, for you to pay for the home as far as financing. Um, now, you'd be getting that at an 8%. We're just going to say 8%. They are, interest rates are dropping. But for this example, we're going to show you 8% just so you can see the numbers. So principal and interest only, you'd be paying about $1,400 a month. Now, what they would do is you blend the payments together. So if you blend those payments together, you'd be paying around 25, uh, 2,600 a month. And this is where it really hits. So let's say you're going out to get your conventional loan. You get a 7.87, we'll just give or take, right? Your home that you're trying to buy is a $450,000 home. Uh, the principal and interest approximately on that home is gonna be about $3,260. That's about a $700 difference. Yes, in one, you're assuming someone else's loan and through the VA, um, part, will you still be eligible for the full VA benefits? That's going to be more of a lender situation because it depends on what you put down. But the idea here is you might not have to be stuck with that high interest rate and high monthly payment, um, but it's going to be something that you want to coordinate with your real estate agent and lender so that, that, so that way they can coordinate that with the listing agent or the buyer's agent or whoever needs uh, to have the right information so that way the parties can be aligned. That way we can get the deal done. This can be a way. So if you're someone who's waiting to buy, um, for lower prices, maybe this can be something that you can take. If you're somebody who's waiting for someone to buy your home, maybe this can be an avenue you take, okay? But if you want more information on this, just let me know and I will get you in touch with the lender and we'll get that out. Texas overall is, I would say, very, very strong considering how damaged and how beat up some other markets have gotten. If you look at these stats, these are September month over month stats for the whole entire state of Texas. As you can see, we are down only 0.1%. Keep in mind, where are interest rates? Where were they then? Where are they now? Yeah, the moment interest rates do become less, you will see that median price increase um, probably much more than just 0.1%. You do see active listings up 15%. There currently is more inventory than there was in 2022, and there are more new builds being built, which I do believe they are contributing to this as well as the uh, closed sales. Now, the closed sales are down 14%, um, but that's 
that's um, that's expected, really, with interest rates pretty much doubling, affordability doubling, and then the addition to more homes on the market. So closed sales have dropped 14% year over year, but we will probably see an uptick the moment interest rates or affordability sets in. Okay, now we will be going back to the seven day stats. So Grayson County within the last seven days, they had 37 properties sold, 87 new listings and 36 pending. So pretty steady, um, an increase of new listings. So that's something that you like to see. Next, we're gonna touch over Hood County. Hood County, they had 27 properties sold, 31 new listings and 21 pending. Moving forward, we're gonna go over Navarro County now. Navarro County had 12 properties sold, 22 new listings and four pending. 22 listings is an increase from the last seven days. Next, we're gonna to touch over Parker County. So Parker County, 37 properties sold, 89 new listings and 43 increase in the new listings, a little bit of a decrease as far as properties sold, um, but that's okay. We're starting to get into the deeper into the holiday period, which you should still see an increase in November, December, January when people start moving again. Last county we're gonna to touch over is Wise County. So Wise County within the last seven days, 20 properties sold, 29 new listings and 28 pending, uh, pretty steady. Um, and that area has got a lot of growth headed its way. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions whatsoever about the market, selling, buying, the assumable loan, other ways that you can get into a home, there's so many avenues. Just reach out and I would love to assist you or at least provide you the pathway that can lead you to your real estate goals, whether that be investing, a new home, downsizing, whatever that might be. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Once again, my name is Trevon. I am a real estate agent with Century 21, Mike Bowman. Inflation can be your friend or an enemy. It just depends on your situation. Um, but the best thing is to try to get as much stats, uh, try to get as much information, ask as many questions as you possibly can, because the more information you get, typically the better results that you will receive. So once again, thank you if you made it this far and you have a blessed week. Century 21 Real Estate. Move fearlessly.